Hello. Congrats. All right. Let's go ahead and get started with introductions. It's my pleasure to welcome to the Dais Creighton head coach Jim Flannery, as well as student athletes Morgan Molly and Tatum Rembau. Good, you got it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> let's start with an opening statement, please, coach. Yeah, this team just continues to amaze me, and um, we're so proud of you know how they've grown, what what kind of fight that they have, and and how they play for each other and just couldn't be more proud of them, the, the growth that we've seen. Um, you know, I told a lot of people, we were, we were four and eight at the end of January a year ago. We had won four games and we had, had a, obviously a lot of COVID, but it started last year. I felt like we, we really got a lot better. People like Morgan, who were freshmen, um, got got experience and we got in the NIT and uh, you know I just we came back hungry and uh, we didn't get out of the blocks we lost two of our first three um, but uh, you know we've been a good practice team and I think when you when you practice well and we've been healthy I think that's a huge part we've we had we had we've had a really good practice situation this year in terms of people being healthy and and I think when you do that you can get better but uh, you know. Uh, Iowa State, uh, congratulations to them. They had a, a great year. They're a great program, a, a tremendous team. We have a lot of respect for them. Uh, but, uh, you know, about these two, you know, somebody, somebody referenced Morgan as a, as a bench player the other day, and I said, that's kind of an insult. I know, <laughs> I know she was sixth player of the year, but she's, she's not a bench player. We just don't start her, but she's on the floor a lot. <laughs> and... Uh, and then Tatum was incredible tonight. I mean, you know, um, the, the third quarter, uh, her confidence and, and, and her ability to make the plays that she did really kind of flipped the game, I felt like. We had, a, we had a good run at the end of the second quarter to get ourselves in, at, into a tie at half, and I felt that really helped us. But, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to get ready for South Carolina uh, starting in the morning. and, and uh, we're going to swing away. We're going to we're going to prepare the right way, and and then we're going to come swing away Sunday night. As a reminder, we're going to start this first portion of the Q and A for the student athletes only. If you have a question, please let us get a microphone to you. Give us your name and affiliation, and who your question is directed to. We're going to start over here on the far left side, third, uh, fourth row. Aaron Beard with the AP. This is from Morgan. I guess you were doing a TV interview at midcourt, I think, and you got doused pretty good. Most people hold the water until the locker room. Uh, just kind of what was your what was your emotions kind of in the celebration and then getting doused on the court? Um, it was so fun. I guess that's kind of a tradition now that we keep winning. Um, <laughs> but um, I just love playing with this team, and it makes the celebrations that much better. Take our next question right here to our left, second row. Uh, Gabe Ureem, Jays 24-7. Uh, so, like, in that third quarter into the fourth quarter, it kind of felt like you guys could do, you know, whatever you wanted. They would switch. You guys would slip. They would bring nail help. You guys would pop out. What, what was that process like just on the court? Like, do you guys have to communicate that stuff when you see it, or do you guys just, like, have it built in to, you know, what you're doing out there? Tatum, can you start, please? Um, we have a lot of freedom in practice, and we practice that motion almost every single day. Um, so I feel like it's a little rough, like when you're in June and July trying to figure each other out. But once you start to build that chemistry, you kind of know who's going to back cut, who's going to curl, who's going to bump and pop, and who you want to bump and pop. Um, so it definitely comes with a lot of practice. Morgan? I would just say we have players who make plays. <laughs> We'll go right down here to the front, off to our right. Uh, Joe Nugent, WOWT uh, Morgan, speaking of making plays. I don't know if any of your three-pointers that you made, you were actually close to the line. They seemed like they were all deep. And I don't know if any of them even touched the rim either. I mean, how did it feel? I mean, you were ready to let it go. Yeah, um, that's kind of what I'm used to, just coming in off the bench, just letting it fly. Um, my teammates got me great looks. Um, just kind of read the defense and... You know, once the 
first one or two go down, uh, it gives me a lot of confidence to keep letting it go. Move back over here to our left, third row. Uh, Ellie French with KETV. Um, Tatum, obviously this is your last season and that's getting, it's, it getting extended now. Uh, how does that just feel? I cannot be more grateful that this season has gotten to be extended two more weeks um, just from the Big East tournament. And um, these girls have made it so worth it on and off the court. They're definitely my best friends and I wouldn't want to go through this with anyone else. Okay, we'll go back to our left a little further back, Andrea. Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com as the final seconds were ticking off. Can you just describe your emotions? I mean, the parents and fans behind me were crying. What was it like for you guys? Morgan, you start. Um, it's just unreal. It, this whole, the past two weeks hasn't felt real, but um, it's been amazing, you know, to have that lead going into the fourth quarter and do enough to stick it out and have Tatum make great, um, make those free throws at the end and defensive stops were huge. Um, this is just a great experience. Come back down again to the uh, second row on our left. Uh, so after you guys lost in the, in the Big East tournament, you know, did, did you think this was gonna happen? Like what was your mentality then and, and how did it take you to now? Tatum, you start. That loss hurt um, in the Big East tournament. It's really hard to play a team three times, but that was definitely a game that we shouldn't have lost. And so I think everyone came back from spring break really eager and really ready to go because um, we know how good we are and we knew how good we were back then. Um, so I think we had to change our mindset a little bit to prepare ourselves a little bit better. Morgan? Yeah, that one stung, but um, I think we came back stronger and we really dialed in on you know what each of our roles are and we just kind of focused on meshing and making a run because um, we knew that we could. Let's go back up to Andrea. Tatum, as a quick follow-up to that, your parents and, and family were very emotional. Can you just describe what it means for this program, this fan base, everybody associated with the magnitude of this win? Our parents are amazing. Um, as you guys can see, they travel so well and they all stay at the same hotel and they all go out to eat before the games and they hang out after the games. Um, so it really is just one big family here with a lot of love. Take our last question for our student athletes right here in the third row, a little off to our left. Hi, this is for both of you guys. It seemed like around, I want to say like the middle of the third quarter, you guys went on a little run, forced Iowa State to call a timeout. You guys were celebrating and really hyped up as the timeout was called, you're going to your bench. At what point in the game did you guys really like smell blood in the water? Morgan? I would say, yeah, in, in the middle of the third quarter, um, we had our offense was working really well and a lot of people step up and hit a lot of, hit some shots um, and we, um, started rebounding the ball better on the defensive end, and that was, I think, kind of how they hung in the game, uh, second chance points. Um, so yeah, right around there. Tatum, the last word's yours. I feel like we're an emotional team and we're gonna celebrate who deserves to be celebrated. Um, so when someone hits a big three and we go into a timeout, we're gonna show them all the love. Congratulations to both of you. You guys can head back to your locker room. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's go ahead and start the Q&A with Coach again. Give us your hand. We'll start over here. Aaron on our left. Aaron Beard with the AP. Uh, we were asking the players about their emotions, but what were yours like when the horn finally sounded? You could stop worrying about this game. You went over to the crowd and gave a couple thumbs up, but what, what were your emotions after many times of trying to get to this point and now you're past it? Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I've enjoyed this team so much that it's, you know, I told him, you know, you want to keep advancing because that's the goal, but I also want to just keep coaching this team. So that's kind of what I was thinking is just, I just love coaching this team because I never, you know, it's different people, different nights. Like I said, I mean, you know, we had 30 bench, you know, bench points tonight and that's typical of us. We don't, you know, it's, you know, Emma Ronsick's our leading scorer and I didn't play her in the fourth quarter tonight. And, uh, you know, one because I didn't trust her, it was because I trusted 
some other people. Peyton Brodsky, you know, was unbelievable tonight. I thought she was, she's played the best basketball of, of her career this year. Um, um, and, uh, you know, we just have different people. You know, Molly Mogensen, I thought, <coughs> uh, was, was really solid. And, uh, you know, and then we got some people who don't get to play who are super unselfish. So it's, I think it's about, you know, just continuing to play. And, and what a great opportunity, you know, Sunday night to play South Carolina. I mean, that's, you know, uh, you know <laughs> after watching them play, um, we came out to the bench and we were watching Iowa State in front of us warm up and us on the other end warm up and they all, we all seemed so small. <laughs> I was like, they're post playing. You know, it's just, it's, it'll be different. I mean, we'll have to, we'll have our work cut out for us, but uh, just the opportunity to keep coaching and just so grateful. You know, Tatum mentioned our parents. I mean, it's such a, we're a small, smaller school and, and, and our, I, you know, I think when you're a women's basketball coach, you get maybe just a, you, you give yourself a little bit more access to parents because like she said, they, they're in the same hotel and, you know, they're, they're a part of it. And, uh, so I'm, I mean, I'm super happy for our players, but I know, I know what kind of sacrifices their parents made to get them to this point. And that's, that's so cool. I mean, I just, the, the, the images I had in my head after we beat Iowa were of our players hugging their parents. And that's what's really cool about, you know, where I am right now in terms of, you know, viewing what just happened. Go ahead, take our next question on the other side of the aisle, about six rows back. Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. Can you just describe the composure of your team late in the game? Iowa State's battling back. You make your free throws and you're able to seal it. Uh, better than their coaches. I got a little, <laughs> I got a little animated a couple times. Um, yeah, good. I mean, it, it, you know, when we put Tatum and Molly on the floor together, now we have two ball handlers. It, it helps us. And, and uh, you know, we, they downsized and went small, and they, they did that a lot during the game, and we downsized um, really a lot in the second half. And then down the stretch, we were playing five guards too because we had a, felt like we had a big enough lead um, as long as we didn't give up threes and as long as we didn't turn the ball over, we were in good shape. And then, you know, the other part of that was we made some free throws, you know. Um, Tatum stepped up and made them. Lauren made a couple. So, um, yeah, I think it was a little bit, you know, part of it's, you know, Tatum being a fifth year, and a couple of our kids who are just kind of steady and flatliners. And then, um, you know, just I thought going small where we had a ball handling team on the floor where we, you know, where you, you look like you're composed because you're, you're not sped up as opposed to if we'd had a bigger lineup on the floor. Right down here in the front second row. Uh, Coach, uh, I asked the players about what happened after that Seton Hall loss, and I want to ask you, you know, what, what's, what were you feeling then, and then what's changed since then to get you guys to this point? Sure. Well, first of all, Seton Hall's a really good basketball team. They're in the final eight of the NIT, and, you know, we had had a, a double overtime game with them about two weeks before the conference tournament, so it's not, there's no shame in losing to them. Um, but... I don't know. I think the newness of the tournament helps. I, I really believe we're, you know, from a style standpoint, we're just a little different. I mean, you know, when you talk about what we, what we do on offense, we're, we're, we're a little different than what most people see, and I think that helps us in a, in a tournament format where they only have X number of days to prepare, and they're trying to find, you know, film maybe of teams that, you know, play like us and, and so I think that's helped us and once you win one your confidence is is for sure greater so I mean we've had we've had three tight games and so so there's some good fortune in winning too it's not you know the Colorado game was tighter than the final score went down to the last two three minutes obviously Iowa went down to the final possession and today you know we had a little separation but not not a ton but uh, I don't know I mean I think I don't know. I think we're. I think we're. What I what I love about this team is our 
I mean, our sophomore class is really good. I mean, our three leading scorers are in our sophomore class, but our upperclassmen provide so much. And tonight, Tatum was a scorer, but she doesn't have to be. Um, but I think we've got that, that really good combination of, of youthful enthusiasm, and they don't know any better, and then good leaders who kind of guide them and reel them in when they try to get a little too um, either emotional or, you know, you know, maybe aren't quite as focused. So that 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 to me has been has been impressive. Time for two more. I know who you are. We're going to take one right here, third row back, a little bit towards the middle. Yep. Thanks. I oh, forgot to identify myself. M Adler with the next. Um, I just want to. So Iowa State infamously has a unique fan environment for their games. Yeah. Especially the, these kinds of games. Is there a way you m mentally or emotionally prepare your players to to deal with that and play through it? Well, it certainly helped us to play in Iowa City last weekend in front of 15,000. So I think that was a was a, a help. And I, you know, I thought it was great. A lot of the South, I know North Carolina men played right after their women, so I didn't see a lot of Carolina blue. Um, but uh, I thought a lot of the South Carolina fans um, stayed around. That was nice. I thought the atmosphere. I thought that helped make the atmosphere. But yeah, I mean, Bill's done an incredible job at Iowa State and what the, what they've built in terms of the success of the program and 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 how they draw and how they're supported um is 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 really impressive so we um i don't know but our players have 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 been in that environment some and and i just think they we were ready to play last question on the aisle over here flan it was a tie game at the half what was your message to the girls before they went back out on the court yeah that uh that we can play better like i you know i felt like we turned the ball over too much in the first quarter and then the second quarter we didn't defensive rebound and so i know that uh i think we had five turnovers in the first quarter 10 for the game so much better job the last three quarters and then we gave up eight oh boards offensive boards in the first half and only three in the second half so we I, we cleaned those up and that's what i said i said we we're tied and we, we can play better. We can play, you know, quite a bit better. I said we're, you know, and, and the nerves are hopefully a little bit behind us. But, you know, and I felt, I mean, Iowa State probably felt like they could play better too. They missed some open threes in that first half. But, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, other than that, it was it was just a few tactical things. But, you know, a few things that they were running that, that, that we didn't defend very well. And, you know, just trying to get them to slow down a little bit. Uh, offensively, but I thought we had done that in the second quarter much better than the first. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Sounds good.